podcast, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about identity and what kind of identities you have and how you can incorporate them into your artwork. We're going to take it easy. We're going to start with a little fun exercise. On each of your desks, you'll find two index cards. They should be blank. Why don't you take a moment, collect your thoughts, and think about what two identities you have. Write one on each index card. For me, I wrote that I'm a student. I'm always learning, and I love learning. It's like my favorite thing, honestly. And my second identity is that I'm Jewish. This is a cultural and a religious marker in my life that has been present since I was born and will probably be present when I die. Once you are done writing down your identity markers, we're gonna put them down on the desk and we're gonna take the stickers that are also at your desk and we're gonna walk around the room and we're gonna put a sticker on each card that you identify with. So you aren't putting a sticker on your own cards. We're gonna walk around the room and put stickers on other people's cards that we have commonalities with. So, why don't we get started? We're gonna pretend we did that because I don't have an actual class. Um, at the end of this activity, we're gonna go around the room and we're gonna talk about um, what we have in common with other people. We're gonna look at the cards, we're gonna see who had more spots, who had little spots, what surprises us. Um, and I think we'll find that we all have a lot more in common than we might have originally thought. Thinking about how we can incorporate our identities, any aspect of our identities in art might be daunting to you, but I assure you it has been done before. Many artists have grappled with their identity and I think for a lot of artists, we put our a little bit of our identity in every piece that we make. We're gonna go over four artists that tackle some sort of identity of theirs or of others in their artwork. So hence, identity in art. First, we're gonna focus on Deborah Cass. She is a Jewish American artist. She uses Xerox and printmaking. She's been inspired by Andy Warhol. The thing that she didn't like about Andy Warhol was that he focused a lot on the glamour and like uh, rigid beauty standards that Hollywood projected. He made a lot of prints about the glamorous Jackie Kennedy, who, um, as you may know from your history class, was the wife of one of our presidents, John F. Kennedy. Deborah Cass put her own twist on the, Ke on the Jackie Kennedy prints by using Barbara Streisand's image in place of Jackie Kennedy, titling it Jewish Jackie. Barbara Streisand was one of very few Jewish actresses that were displayed by Hollywood as Cass grew up. So she wanted to embody her in her work. Um, for her, it was probably the first time she'd seen someone that even looked like her in Hollywood because even though you know she was white and there was like a lot of white people in Hollywood, um, her features, like maybe her nose or her cheekbones or her, the type of hair that she had, weren't really considered uh, a part of the traditional beauty standards of the time. She incorporated them into her work. Our next artist is Lorna Simpson. She's an African-American artist and in her piece Wigs, she tackles the theme of hair. In her piece Wigs, it is a Actually, as you can see, it's like a bunch of several different pieces. So she used lithography to produce these pieces and she printed them onto felt. Felt is a material with a texture similar to hair. So she really, you know, hit home the idea that this piece is about hair. Hair is really important in the African American community for a variety of reasons. Um, how you wear your hair naturally or um, in protective styles really says, really is a statement about um, fashion, like it's a fashion statement and it's like an important health statement as well, I think. Like certain hairstyles, like I said, are protective. Like they literally like, how you can do your hair will protect their hair. And it's very important to them. And unfortunately, because of racism in our country, black people are often discriminated against for wearing their hair naturally or in protective, healthy styles. So this piece called Wigs is about the different hairstyles that black people have 
and um, how they wear their hair. And um, I found that this was really interesting. I think it's really poignant to like today's culture and atmosphere and how black people are still treated to this day just for like how they wear their hair. Mike Kelly is another artist that explores identity through his work. He does things in a very interesting way. So he takes photographs from yearbooks and newspapers and he reconstru reconstructs a whole scenario surrounding that photograph reference. He films and creates music for the scene as well. Here um, is the first of his series from an extracurricular activity projective reconstruction, a domestic scene. Um, as you can see, there are two men and one is very well dressed and one's a little disheveled and they're in a small room. So he created a, a story of two gay men, one comfortable with his sexuality, one not, um, dealing with the confines of their small space together. He wanted to focus on the aspect of, the more psychological aspect of identity in dealing with trauma and repressing memories. And I just found that to be very interesting and I hope that's something you also explore in your work. And our last artist for today is Glenn Ligon. He is a printmaker, um, amongst other things. This work is called Condition Report. It is a print of I am a man. I found this phrase to be very poignant. Um, in the civil rights movement, many African-American men held signs that said, I am a man, or am I too a man, or am I not a man too? So this brings back, this harkens back to that civil rights demonstrations and um, the plight of like the African-American community in this country. So I found that also very interesting. For your project, you don't have to be activist-y. I know all these um, pieces might seem that way. I just want you to dig deep and find at least one aspect about yourself to represent in your painting. I want you to think about it. You can use the identity, one of the identities from the identity cards. That's part of the reason why we did this exercise to get you thinking and to give you something to fall back on in case you can't come up with anything. What you're gonna do next is, um, after I give my demonstration, you are going to work on your composition in your sketchbook. You're gonna do research on your cell phone. You're gonna look up people, iconography, rituals, symbolism, objects, people, places, things that relate to that aspect of your identity that you want to represent. So this is a self-portrait I made uh, back when I had blonde hair. This is my example for this project. You absolutely can do a self-portrait if you want to. That's why I have this example here. It doesn't have to be a self-portrait if you do not want to do a self-portrait for that project. We will do a self-portrait later on this semester, but you have the option to you know, practice the figure and form and familiarizing yourself with your face. Um, doing a self-portrait is a great way to tackle your identity and how you perceive yourself, but it's not mandatory for this lesson. You can pick, um, like I said, you can pick an object, a place, a person, maybe an iconic figure from your culture, or you can display yourself doing an activity um, related to your identity. It's really open, it's really up to you and how you want to display your identity and like I said, it only has to be one aspect. It could be more aspects. It could be a collage of aspects, but it only has to be one aspect. So I like to start off with just a simple palette. Um, I picked an object to show you while I'm demoing how to paint. I have titanium white, burnt sienna, and cadmium yellow. I always, for me personally, I always use white in all my paintings. You will probably most likely use white in most of your paintings as well. And I usually, I usually like to use burnt sienna um, to sketch out my underpainting. I don't like, and I want you to avoid, I do not like using pencils to sketch on the canvas because it smudges and it makes your paint gray and it just mixes with the paint and it just makes it a little unpleasant. Uh, for this demoing, I'm just going to be sketching out for you on the canvas a menorah, which is used during Hanukkah in my faith, which is a holiday. Hanukkah is a holiday. And um, so that's why I chose these colors, because they're kind of, they kind of match with like 
but menorah would be like so that's that's something that's a part of it. you have to think about like what colors you want to use and how you're going to use them and where you're going to use them like it's it's a process to figure out how your composition is going to turn out for me color is always a big part of my composition so i'm going to start with a little bit of linseed oil you can see i have it in a mini jar and I have my linseed oil here if I need more. I keep it separate in a jar because once you add oil paint to your linseed oil, it ruins the oil, it makes it dirty. And you want like, you don't want to ruin your whole supply of linseed oil by um, adding like a dirty brush to it. So I'm gonna take it and I'm going to use my wet linseed oil brush to draw out some paint. And I'm just going to go right in. Like I said, I don't like to sketch it out with a pencil because it makes the canvas and the paint kind of icky. So I already know what a menorah looks like um, from years of drawing menorahs and just from years of experience with the menorahs. I just start, like I said, with the underpainting. I do it kind of lightly. I don't exactly like measure it out, um, not with objects like this, although it is symmetrical. So if you have a symmetrical object and you want to measure that out to get it even, that's by all means do that. Just some things work better for others, and like I said, if I had to measure, I would be using a pencil, and I just don't like doing that. You can use a pencil, like I'm not going to take points off for that. Um, just be aware of the effects it will have on your work. And we have a little, little stem going down here. Nothing crazy. This is just an example. Do, do, do. And there's a candlestick in the middle. And this is really just the skeletal bare bones of what I'm making. questions while I'm painting. If you have any, Riley, my one student. Or not, you don't have to ask any questions. Why are you using red? Like I said, I use burnt sienna for all my underpaintings. Um, frankly, it's just the color I was taught to use for underpaintings. And so I'm just used to doing it by now. Um, it's like a good, I feel like it is a good color because it's like it's pretty neutral. It's a little dark, but I thin it out with the linseed oil. It's pretty neutral. It's not bright or flashy. And when you paint on top of it, um, it adds like a nice warm glow, I think. So that's why I like to use it. You can use a different color for your underpainting, for sketching out if you choose to use paint instead of using pencil. So obviously that's not the color of a menorah. Menorah is usually gold, yellow, so we're gonna take, like I said, a little bit of linseed oil. I just like to use it. Um, it thins out the paint. That's really what it's for, is thinning out the paint. And also, for creating glazes when you make layers later on, I still use it for the mixing process, even though I probably don't have to. I just find it's better to like integrate um, the color when you're mixing it, because sometimes when you mix a color, you don't use any linseed oil, and then you just pop some linseed oil in it. It just takes extra time to mix. So I, I just like to start off with it. I'm gonna add a little bit of white because that's like a very orangey yellow. I actually might switch yellows. So I don't know if I like that. And that's okay, if you find you don't like the color that you start off with, um, you can take another color. We have plenty of paints here. Um, just be mindful of the amount that you use. Um, a little bit of oil paint goes a long way, so I like to try and conserve the amount that I'm using um, when I'm mixing, and um, you can always add more later, so. Yeah, this isn't like the bright yellow I want, so. It's a brighter hue. It's more yellowy. For reference, I use water-soluble paints for the most part. My white isn't water-soluble, um, because I like to get bigger 
tubes of that and it's kind of expensive. Um, water soluble just means that it mixes with water and that you can wash it out more easily with water. If you just use straight up oil paints, it's really difficult to clean your brushes and brush cleaning is very important because if you have a dirt, you don't really want to work with dirty brushes. You don't really want to work with stiff brushes. Like that's very annoying. Um, sometimes if you like have leftover pigment in your brush, it gets into the paint and it taints the color. You don't want that. So you just mix. Sometimes you bring the pigment over to the white because um, you usually only need a little bit of pigment to mix with white. There's a nice bright yellow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and like apply it. You can start kind of anywhere. Um, I usually like to work generally because I'm right-handed left to right so that I'm not smudging anything. I'm sure lefties will agree that you like to work um, right to left. So I'm just gonna try and hold this so that the so Riley can't film. Yeah, just pop it on there. And oil painting takes a while, takes a lot of time and patience. Um, as you can see, like the color mix, that's also part of the reason why I chose raw sienna as my under for my underpainting because I knew I would like how it would look with the menorah and um and how it would mix. So yeah, you have to be patient and you won't be painting like this. You'll be painting in a much more convenient position. I'm just doing this for your benefit so you can see what I'm doing. I know I said I like to work like to left but like right now I'm on this side and it's just easier. So yeah. It's good to be comfortable when you're painting because when you're uncomfortable, it's you're focusing more on like the uncomfort and the, about like how you're uncomfortable and about how um, to like stop your hand from shaking or stop the canvas from shaking. But you know you'll have an easel and you'll be sitting in front of it like this and you'll be in a pretty comfortable position and you'll just be happy as a clam. Okay, class, that's all I have to show you. So now I like I said, I want you to get your sketchbooks out. I want you to get your phones out and I want you to do research for referencing and um, I want you to get sketching. And I will be popping around the room, ask me any and all the questions that your heart has and I will do my best to answer them. I'm very excited for this project. I'm very excited to see how you guys express yourselves. If you want um, any guidance, I'm here of course. We're gonna start painting next class. So that means by next class, you need to have a composition in your sketchbook for reference. So that means um, if I want to do a self-portrait, I would have this figure of myself drawn in my sketchbook and ready by the start of class tomorrow. Okay? Thank you. Bye.